Fukushima report time. We'll be doing this probably for the rest of our lives for you to try to keep you informed and updated so you can make decisions that could literally mean a shorter life or a longer life. And I mean quite a bit shorter, depending upon what you do. If you are continuing to eat sushi, you are going to shorten your life, unless it is from fish out of the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, I don't mean the Gulf of Mexico. Otherwise, we're looking at stories that are just grim, and they keep getting grimmer. Um, here's one. And, and they keep doing this. I don't know why they use it. E&E e &E News shouldn't allow these words. Mystery as scores of dead rare sea animals wash up in Gulf of California. There's no mystery about it. All that radioactive water goes down the coast of California, along Baja, and then heads back across the Pacific Ocean to make the loop and come back again, only with lots of reinforcements. Dozens of carcasses found on beaches and floating in the water. Government experts baffled over the mass death of dolphins, sea lions, and turtles. Like hell they are. It's just all a lie. I'm, I'm so sick of it. Long stretch of coastline closed to the public. Well, finally, one former U.S. government official, and we talked about this last Monday, said that uh, the elephant in the room is Fukushima radiation when it comes to Pacific Ocean animal die-offs. The elephant in the room. This is a former U.S. government official. The government has totally failed to inform the public, the man says, about the full extent of the fallout. Hell, I informed the public about any extent of the fallout. And just last week, the EPA shut down all of its stations. I mean, I the, don't kid yourself, they're still reading. They're, they're doing tests all the time. But uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that as well. This mystery, scientists baffled. Dana, it gets to be uh, terribly, in a black sense, laughable. They just lie. They lie and lie and lie. 70 years, the same lies, too. Same lie over and over and over and over and over and over. And you don't know what to do anymore. I think they're all panicking at this stage because they know the lie doesn't work. But they have to say it. That's how they got the job. That's... Well, That's how they keep their degree. job too, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean you got a, they got a wicked degrees, they got wicked accolades, uh and all kinds of uh uh how would you put a volunteer throughout their their university, they volunteer for all these corporations. Mm -hmm. And then they finally get a job and their job is not to tell them the truth what to learn in college, but to uh, lie really smoothly and say those same lies in, in a different way, but with the exact same meaning and the connotations of the previous lies. And <laughs> that's what they're doing all the time. They, they can't help it anymore. It can't last, see? You know, I think you're right. I think they are panicking and they, because yeah. they, they, they've been lying for five years practically, coming up on five, and you can't, you just can't keep doing it and expect it to have any clout. It just won't. People are going to get sick of it. They'll hear the same crap, and they'll look around, and they'll see real estate values falling by 50%. And they, it's, the answer to the question is obvious. There's no, no debate, no argument, nothing. It's, it's the, the ocean is dead. Yeah, they went too far this time. And they, they can't went. cover this one up. They can't bury it. No. And they don't have conviction in what they're saying anyway. And the people that are... Uh, buying into it are the ones that want to buy into it that subconsciously I think every single person out there now is aware of Fukushima it really feels that way and that is accelerating now heavily mm -hmm. you know the, the actual factual and yet everybody's you, been lawyer. go ahead Jeff I'm sorry. we don't see anything in the uh, mainstream media nothing it's taboo no. it's denoticed you can't talk about it so if it's not in the media, you know, for the average person, they'll, they're happy with that. They don't want to know. It's a lot of denial, and they'll just keep doing what they're doing. And they're getting pounded in the comment sections. Oh, man. <laughs> they can't talk about Fukushima without having a herd of people show up yeah, and just okay. blast them Good. on Fukushima. And I, I do, and debate, yeah. real debates going on. Not like it was a couple of years ago, 
uh, where the PR firms were heavily involved. They still are, but uh, they're getting pounded. They don't, yeah. And they don't have that will. They're just copy, paste, copy, paste. And you can copy their comments and search it on the internet. And you'll find it been pasted a thousand times. And that's what they do, right? So they don't have that. They can't uh-huh. argue the nuances and they can't argue uh-huh. at all. So they don't have any conviction when they're saying it. My take anyway. Well, I agree with you. I totally agree with you. I just wonder what percent we could we could hang on uh, <laughs> the question, how dead is the Pacific Ocean, the North Pacific? 80% dead, 50% dead. I, I, I think it's way up there, way up there. It has to be over 90 now. I think uh, so. All the foundations yeah. are all gone. The squid are gone, the herring, the anchovies, the sardines, the mackerel. These are the most important ones. Okay, you got a you got a you got a chain made of links. Lay it down. Take out every third link, every fourth and fifth link, and Great. keep the uh, other links there. Do you have a chain anymore? No, no. Yeah, and if you put that chain on your anchor and toss it over the side of the boat, <laughs> you're going to wash mm-hmm. up on the rocks. Yeah. Goodbye, quick. goodbye. There is no anchor, and so that's how I always see it. As the anchor on my boat, and that if I take one chain is weak, then the whole yeah. boat can be destroyed instantly. And sure. so you're always constantly yeah. checking. Yep. You don't expect it, but you're checking because <laughs> you're dependent up on each one of those links. And that's what the ocean is. That's what the ecosystem is. And it's not just Fukushima that we learned that from. We learned, we know that throughout history, that the whole system, everything plays an important role, including us. We, we play a major role. Mm-hmm. And now we play a really important role in the sense that if we got to struggle uh, for any kind of a future, for any kind of species left on this planet. So whatever can survive in the next few years are the species that is hopefully going to try to carry us into the future. But it won't be for the Pacific Ocean. They're all gone. All the whales will be gone in two weeks, porpoises. The sea lions are all being, they're all emaciated right now to starve to death. Same as the birds, uh, the birds. You know, 11 species out of the, uh, over 300 species that on the Canadian coastline, you would uh, find the same along the American mm-hmm. coastline. And the ones you do find along the American coastline. And now, when you find 100,000 birds, you know, Jeff, how big the coast is and the ocean is and the fjords right. and the inlets. Right. And, sure. And, uh, there's no way you can find. That's only a percent of a percent of a percent that they're finding. Mm-hmm. And so 100,000 is a, to anybody is a lot of birds. Uh, they are dependent upon the krill and the crustaceans, and they're all gone. And that's why the herring and the anchovies and the sardines and everything else are gone. And These are main main uh, foundational blocks for the entire planetary ecosystem, and they're oh, gone. Sure, sure. They are they're gone. gone. They are all gone. Uh, that's definitive now. And I'm putting. I'm still putting. Uh, still got about six weeks of uploading pictures to the nuclearproctologist.org uh-huh. of the coastline of Canada for people. And you know, at the same time, I'm producing a documentary to tell that story. And it's not normally with five or ten years to make a documentary. We have to get this thing out there and get this conversation happening. We got no time to waste. And it's just an endless, seems like an insurmountable amount to work all day, every day. There's not enough moments in any day for me to get through. It doesn't seem like I accomplish anything, but I don't stop huh. each day. And I do yeah. accomplish it at the end of the week when you look back. Okay, yeah. well, I got something done that week. That's I didn't a, stop. You, you have uh, shamed the governments of the world with your work, literally. I think so. I hope uh, so. I mean, you I have. have. You have. Plan. Yeah, you've done their work. Uh, they, I knew, we saw there was, I don't know, e e News, I don't know how long ago it was, maybe three or four weeks. They had a picture of the North Pacific from, you know, Alaska on down and across. And there was a, they had a, an illustration in the blue water of where all the, uh, the monitoring stations that the government, the EPA and Woods Hole had, had uh, set up. And it looked just like a picket line, exactly like a picket line. They're they're doing everything. They know everything. They won't tell us though. They'll lie and just watch us die. They don't care. Yeah, Woods Hole, Woods Hole was the company you brought in. The PR firm you brought in to test the dust after nine eleven. And they sanctioned it as being perfectly fine. Of course, we know different than that now. Yeah. And Woods Hole was the one he brought in after BP to pacify everybody and tell them Corex was okay. Three, over three million gallons that I know about. Who knows how much is actually out there. 
And of course, that's what he ran with. Both Jay Collin and Ken Buse were the spokespeople for North America, period, by nobody. They're not even nuclear scientists and they're not a marine biologist or ocean uh, marine chemist. And that's, they're both from Woods Hole. They brought it in to cover up the Fukushima, the endless perpetual thing. And interesting thing about Ken Buse, if you go back and look at Fukushima when he first showed up on the scene after Fukushima, mm-hmm. he, that first year he tells the same story a lot where he says, well, you know, since Chernobyl, I've been off doing all this other stuff, but, and so I'm a little bit rusty. Uh, so I just came on board for Fukushima right away when Fukushima happened. And, but he's just a you know, chemist, isn't he? Right. So in other words, he wasn't actively out there. He had been in Chernobyl 28 years ago, but yet they called him out of the blue and brought him out yeah. on purpose. And he had to get up to speed. And for the first year, he was always apologizing that it was taking him a while because, because you know, he hadn't done nothing since Chernobyl, and he just dropped everything and ran at this. But I mean, we got nuclear scientists coming out of our eardrums in North mm-hmm. America, mm-hmm. and none of them. Uh, and Woods Hole has lots of nuclear scientists. They won't and say so, anything. Yeah, eight hundred and fifty or something scientists, but they never brought out a nuclear scientist. They brought out these chemists, uh, marine chemists, and so they they use a numbers game and a word game. Because uh, they don't talk the normal talk, whereas a marine biologist would talk about the species or a nuclear scientist would talk about the implications, uh, you would hope. And so Ken Dursley and them, they talk about uh, nothing in order to bury it. And so they're willing to take they're, what they're trying to do, hope, they're hoping is going to happen is that all the blowback will go on Ken and Jay. Ken uh-huh, and yeah, Dursley. sure. Yeah, instead of lightning Hall. rods for the garbage, sure. Right. <clears throat> instead, right. Instead of Woods Hole. And that they'll just roll out their next one. Tim Masur is the yeah. new guy, the annoying to come out. And, I mean, that's what we got to head them off. Once again, I mean, if we had a million people phoning them up and to get to dethrone these people, we can discredit everything they said. It's the same thing as a police officer gets a conviction, finally, if that could ever happen. Well, yeah. then all of these other cases, Jeff, would automatically go into a retrial because he was a dirty cop. And so it'd be the same thing we could do with Jay Cullen and Ken Buster, where everything they've ever said and everybody that ever repeated it, mm-hmm. all of a sudden uh, has to come out and justify. Yep. That's my take on it anyway. No, it's just a right. stepping, yeah, a stepping no, stone totally for right. to go after. What, what, I'm, what I'm looking to see is how much and how fast the radiation migrates uh, along the shoreline itself. Onto the beaches, onto the foothills, uh, it, it it's going to. It is. We just don't know how much, and that's that's what we have to somehow manage to measure ourselves. Citizen scientists are going to have to do this. And I, uh, what happened to Kelp Watch fourteen? <laughs> huh? you, you got them really good, eh? They're <laughs> giving up results before they even done tests. <laughs> yeah, and they and they have never made the so called results. Public, and, and no, uh, no, they'll wait another fun. year or something. Yeah, Kyle Vetter, he's uh, he's got, he's been quoted too many times on bananas and airplanes and everything else. Yeah, totally, totally discredited, but yet he's from a major institution. Well, so. Kai, Doctor Kai Vetter, the head of uh, nuclear whatever at UC Berkeley. Right. Oh, you mentioned right. uh, corrects it in the Gulf. Let let me right. remind everyone: do not eat anything out of the Gulf of Mexico either. Period. I had uh, Gordy last hour said that the oysters from down there taste funny. I said, well, you know, <laughs> I've talked to him off the air. You can't eat that stuff. <laughs> no. you, you're going to die. There are over 30 <laughs> VOCs, of volatile organic compounds in Corexid, and all it's done is made the oil drop down further out of sight. All that blowout oil is still there. It's still yeah. free-floating. It's just like a big glob yeah. of mucus yes, sir. and uh, sickening, sickening. But what we have, we have uh, chains. Do you have uh, Red Lobster restaurants up there? The no. chain. There's a chain of them down here. Seafood yeah. restaurants. I don't I understand how anybody with a conscience could be involved in that business. I just yeah. don't. I really don't. No. And you see ads on TV for, you know, uh, seafood. And if you're a seafood shop, how can you not hear the, wor- uh, the whispers of the yeah. Yeah. And how can you not look into it yourself? I, I don't. I don't have to. say at least, you know, 70% should look into it, you would expect. You would think. But they That's say the that culture, the sushi yeah. restaurants are booming in L.A. And, uh, of course, 
I That's mean, it, the kelp is like a sponge for this stuff. Yeah. Yes. And then you, you eat the fish that it's obviously dosed. I'm not saying it's, it's all going to kill what, you in a couple of weeks, but go ahead. Whatever's left <laughs> out there is full of radiation. Whatever is everything, left out there is loaded. That's right. Right, because everything else has already been killed off. That's from right. From bioaccumulation from direct results of it. And, uh, you know, cancers, like for the human population... Uh, just remind everybody, takes 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years to manifest and get diagnosed and everything else. But there's 1,800 autoimmune deficiencies like uh, diabetes and strokes and heart attacks, respiratory problems, Alzheimer's, dementia. You got and, it. And right, that are showing up and will uh, have been heavily studied, will show up before cancers. And so that's the... the the trick that everybody keeps forgetting, and I, I never really enforces enough for people, but the studies on the animals in particular, that's what it showed, that all of these are manifesting. But we only hear about studies on fruit flies. And I know. So that's never in the conversation that there's a thousand laboratories at any given time yeah. killing animals throughout the country with radiation. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not because they don't know. They've been doing it for 40, 50, 60 years, longer than that, certainly. It's just that... That's what they do. That's what their whole existence is predicated upon is killing animals. Uh, so Beagle Dogs and Beagle Puppies with Dr. Raymond Gilmetti, there's many other uh, institutions doing the exact same amount of dogs the same ages in separate experiments oh. in order to write us. And in order to peer review that you have to kill all these animals again, he's got uh-huh. 94 studies of uh-huh. the dogs. They all died in about three or four years mm-hmm. from the exposures. So that's like 20 years, 25 years for humans. But that was just a single exposure. We're getting dosed all the time. And Jeff, like the bioaccumulating, as you know, if I drink uh, Canada right now, the drinking water status in Canada is around 10 becquels for cesium. So if I got 10 becquels of cesium in a glass, in a liter of water, four glasses of water, and I drink, say, two liters a day, say, for instance, well, that's 20 becquels today, but tomorrow I got 40 becquels. And the next day I got, you know, it just keeps going, or 20 barrels, next day 30, next day 40, next day 50, till the end of time I'm adding these numbers up. But it's not just the, the CCM, it's all the other elements that they admit to. They're over 200 that they thousands. don't talk about. Right. They don't and talk a couple of hundred that are really serious, that are definitely yeah. long-term ones. Yeah. Uh, they're going to be present at the same time in that liter of water. And so people don't understand that, and they don't, they're not able to wrap their mind around it. And that certain foods will increase those doses dramatically. You can't avoid water. Uh, but certain foods, you know, uh, like fish, is just, it's just wrong to eat it at the ocean now because the ocean mm-hmm. is 70% of the planet, so 70% of the fall it is landing in the ocean. And that the species are all eating each other and sort of massively, what, like if we eat a fish uh, that's three years old right uh-huh. now, it's got uh-huh. three years of bioaccumulating. Yep, that's yep. insanity. Totally. That's totally. like drinking, you know, hundreds of gallons of water instead of a liter each time you have fish. And that's the way people need to look at it. But it only, it only takes one atom to give you the cancer or the other one deficiencies down the road. But what about if you're getting dozens and hundreds a day coming into your system? We can tolerate it for a certain extended period of time, but then it catches up like it did with the dogs and yeah. the other animal studies. Yeah. And the sad thing is uh, we'll have... Uh, Plausible deniability because of the time lag. Right. Well, you got cancer of the esophagus because of who knows some toxin. It wouldn't be radioactivity. <laughs> no, no, anything no. but that. <laughs> Radiation uh, sensors uh, reported in the Wall Street Journal in major U.S. cities. Okay, now think about this. This is your Environmental Protection Agency, the agency you would think would protect you. The Environmental Protection Agency, you're part of the environment, so you should get protected, okay? Here's the study. Here's the headline. Radiation sensors in major U.S. cities turned off because they don't work. (laughs) What? See? Most stations run by EPA can't monitor for beta particles in real time, prompting criticism. Agency says monitoring for gamma rays is enough. Well, maybe it's potentially arguable, I guess. A national radiation monitoring system enhanced after 
the September 11th attacks on 9-11, not 3-11, 9-11, isn't working as intended, says the story, with nearly three quarters of stations not checking for a type of radiation in real time, including ones in New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. Now, what does this all mean? Uh, it, what it means is it's not good. I'm not sure if this is a soundy, as a sound story or what. Let's see. Yeah, let's, uh, let me back this up here. I want to hear what this guy has to say. Here we go. Hold on. Jeff with uh, Dana Durnford. We're going to go through the break and listen to this uh, YouTube video. Radiation sensors in major U.S. cities turned off because they don't work. I have a big time heads up here as radiation sensors in major U.S. cities are being turned off. They're stating that the reason why they're being turned off is because they supposedly do not work. I'm not buying that. Now, most stations run by the EPA can't monitor for beta particles in real time. This has prompted criticism. Agencies say that monitoring for gamma rays is enough. Now, this is very concerning to me, especially with Obviously, the Fukushima disaster that is still ongoing to this day, it's not getting any better. In fact, it's getting worse. And, of course, the Westlake landfill crisis that's ongoing right now just outside of St. Louis to where there's an underground fire smoldering about a 1,000 feet away from illegally dumped nuclear waste from the Manhattan Project. Massive This is right waste. outside of St. Louis. There's millions of people that could potentially be affected by this. There's people that already, I'm sure, could be, are being affected by this, obviously. Now, if you come over here to Nuke Pro, uh, it's nukeprofessional.blogspot. He breaks this down in great detail in regards to Fukushima, talking about how the EPA shut off the beta radiation monitors because strontium-90 is a beta-type radiation. And he says, if you're gonna, after you read this, you're going to be pissed. You may want to take action. Here's the guy in charge. He leaves the contact details for Radiation Protection Division, Jonathan Edwards. If you feel so inclined, feel free to contact. Now, he breaks down how the strontium replaces calcium in your bones, where the blood cells are made, and it stays there until you die right here. So this... This is big time. And he shows here as well that Jonathan Edwards, he flip-flopped on, on the, the importance of the beta monitoring. He says that 2012 EPA report said that gamma monitoring wasn't sufficient to deal with the threat of strontium-90, which could cause large-scale public health impacts. I'm not going to have time to go over all this information. There's a lot of information here. For example... The Environmental Protection Agency officials confirmed 99 of its 135 beta radiation sensors in its RADNET system, which monitors all 50 states, the District of Columbia, and Puerto Rico, aren't working and have been turned off. Officials blame electromagnetic interference from the sources such as cell phone towers and said that efforts to resolve the problem have been... Oh my God, they're blaming cell phone towers. Uh, 99 out of 135... Beta rad sensors in the radnet system are now off. Okay, this is obvious. What's going on? Unsuccessful. Here's a map here of the active and the inactive radiation monitors all across the country, and you can see right here is roughly the area where this West Lake Bridge Lake landfill is. There's one that's active. There's one that's not active. I'm gonna leave links for this. You guys come check all this out. Now, he also breaks down right here how for just a couple few million dollars a year, this radiation monitoring system, which is automated for the most part, could be fully functional up and running. You take into consideration that we're spending hundreds of millions of dollars funding Islamic radical, <laughs> radical terrorists around the world to destabilize other nations and topple governments. Hundreds of millions of dollars. And then the fat cats in Washington are lining their pockets Oh, my God. And here we we can't cough up a couple million dollars to run this this uh, radiation monitoring system. You got to be kidding me. It's my opinion that they don't want these things up and running. They don't want us to see what's going on. In fact, it's just a fraction of the budget, just a fraction of the budget. So, yeah, yay. they're they're uh, they're dropping the ball on this one, I think, intentionally. Like I said, there's a lot more information here. They're talking about. 
uh, beta spikes being recorded in uh, Corvallis, Oregon. Very interesting. As well as a, a recent animal die off on the coast of Mexico. Uh, there was a bunch of dolphins and turtles, and there's links. You guys come through, check it out. Again, I want to reiterate they're shutting off the radiation detectors, okay? Some background information here on the Westlake landfill. This is the landfill that has an underground fire 1,000 feet away from nuclear waste that was dumped illegally from the Manhattan Project. And they state right here that in 73, leached barium sulfate residues originating from the Manhattan Project were combined with the topsoil and illegally dumped at the Westlake site. Due to the high concentration of radioactive material, Westlake was proposed to be a Superfund site. Okay, there you go. The landfill. You can read all that. Uh, you folks who are, are in the uh, St. Louis area uh, hopefully are up to speed on that. Uh, you can check, uh, just enter it, and Westlake Landfill. Uh, Wikipedia has a pretty good uh, piece on it. He's quoting from that. There are other others out there. And then we had this thing in Las Vegas. Did you hear about that? Hey, yeah, I did. I was just wondering, do they have warranties on those Geiger counters they're using? 99 up and goes down. You think that the company pretty, would pretty be like, weird. hey, you know, send them back. We want yeah, to have a look at yeah, them. Yeah. There's well, 99. That's, that's the best way lot. to control the data, make it go away. <laughs> um, that's what they're doing. Las this, Vegas? This thing in Las Vegas, is uh, they had an explosion of an underground uh, nuclear dump, and it blew rotting, rusting, 55-gallon barrels of uh, radioactive waste up and out of the ground. It just belched them out of the ground, and it went right over the fence outside the compound. Now, this is near Las Vegas, and there was a big spike of radiation in Las Vegas right after this. They uh, it, it's broke crazy. down 160 miles of highway because people were going to drive through had drove through that before they closed it down. And, but they had said it was closed because of the flooding. Now they admit it was closed down because of the radiation. Yeah. But they also say that there was uh, no harmful levels of levels of any kind were found, just natural stuff. And yet they've been bombarding it with planes and helicopters with special equipment on it. There's special teams that came in from Reno. Uh, I read a lot on that. I watched the video on it. It throws... It's like a, a bubbling oil, you know, Jed Clampett, where the oil is bubbling out of the ground. That's what this stuff was doing. Then it would detonate and send it up uh, three or 400 feet was our estimate sure. at my place. Yeah. And so it was, like you say, it was going right over the fence, right all over the highway. And any cars driving through was picking it up, and that was going up into the wheel wells. That was the, wasn't that the, the main road from Las Vegas to Reno? I'm not because sure, but it was a very popular road, and it closed it down north. 160 yeah. miles of it. It just contaminated that whole 160 miles, I guess, from traffic sure. before they closed it, right? Oh, yeah. And they closed it down. Uh, and the whole people was a flood. Once again, they, they now admit they don't know what's in the ground. They said very shoddy records were kept, of course. And we know what these people were like back then. They were dumping it like it's inconceivable. Now we find out 45-gallon drums were blasted across the highway. 55. 55-gallon yeah. uh, drums. And that people draw, uh, only a couple stayed, the rest of them ran away. Because they understood it wasn't just transgenic waste. It was high level spirit. Yeah. This is what they do. They, and it was a private company that owned it. Um, and he went bankrupt. And so the government was like, well, private company owns it. I don't see why we should have to go and clean it up. <laughs> well, they created it and created that mess and gave it to him in the first place so they wouldn't have to clean it up. So they wouldn't have to touch it. And so they, in order to get around the rules and regulations, uh, and they've been doing that ever since. They've been, and they've been doing that like for that since they've been at the industry. And, yeah. The whole country is a wasteland at this stage from that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this didn't go away. It just moved east uh, and it settled down uh, all around the area of the, uh, the explosion. And in Las Vegas, the radiation spike on October the 18th uh, is just off the charts. You can look at E&E &E News and, and see this. It's. Uh, I'm not sure if the left – what is the left graph – 115 to 205. Is that CPM? Do uh, we know? I don't know. I can't tell don't know you. what it is. No, I haven't uh, seen it. Here's a radioactive dump that uh, burned in Nevada had past troubles. This is New York Times. Great. State officials said this week they didn't immediately know what blew up there. A fire inspector from the state, Martin Azevedo, surveyed the site Wednesday. I wonder how he was dressed. I wonder how <laughs> he was dressed. Uh, hazmat? 
His I report did. obtained Friday by the AP described moisture in the pit where the blast occurred, <laughs> moisture in the pit, and heavily corroded 55-gallon drums in and around the 20-by-30-foot crater. This was a big <laughs> blast, folks. Oh, yeah. Debris from the blast spread 190 feet. Now, please, 190 feet. What about what went up in the air and was picked up by the prevailing winds? On top of that. 190 and, miles? It was well, so a serious blast yeah. on your property. That would two or three houses around you would have got damaged. And so it's a serious blast is a way to look at it. But then yeah. the wind takes it and then all the traffic is scooping it up of course. and reliberating it. You know how there's dust on the road or snow on the road. You drive over, it goes flying immediately. And this stuff does that and gets into the air intakes of the people's vehicles into the to grill and to the ear intakes and contaminating everything all the time Never, anyway. When you're in your car, have those outside air vents open. Right. Never. Yeah. And remember the video showing all that uh, plumes coming at it. Just a single plume of this is very dangerous mm -hmm. and it contaminates a very large area. And when it's doing it for days and days, they said they went and put it out, but there's no proof they went in there and put it out. There's no proof to firefighters. How, why would all this? Why would they go, in, go there? in there and they, they let firefighters they, go? No, of Sorry, course Jeff. not. Yeah. They would no, no, no they Dana. Sense. They wouldn't go damn well near the place. Right. They know, and you wouldn't let the fire department do it either because that would come back and haunt them. And they got to have it doing that anyway. Anything that might come back and haunt them, they want homeless to go <laughs> in there like Fukushima. You know, they don't want to pay out compensation and pay out health care and pay out pensions based upon radiation injuries because that goes against the uh, industry and exactly. they've always blacklisted everybody that right even. so you you folks in las vegas uh hopefully we're getting some good news uh in your media there and you weren't blacked out of it 20 by 30 foot crater uh debris meaning the actual drums 55 gallon drums were found outside the fence line, two of them. Nevada State Emergency Management Chief Caleb Cage said operating records for the damaged trench. Look how they look how they phrase this. They call this a damaged trench. <laughs> Leaking. <laughs> Unbelievable. They said records weren't immediately available. Now, it was an energetic fire too. And we know how energetic uranium burns at. Oh sure. Former and Nevada it, governor. It only needs oxygen to stir. It doesn't That's need all. flame to stir. No, no. Yeah, does, you don't have to go in there and, and put a match to it. Right. Just Former, add oxygen from those noble gases and it'll detonate. That's what it does. And so the detonation, of course, was opening up other canisters and then they were detonating. And that's why we've seen the multiple detonations. And then this could go on for extended periods. It's a very a, a small atomic bomb. Right. That's what it was. Yeah, just keep, and then it could be gotten to a chain reaction in a China syndrome deer right now because whatever was in that trench blew up at the same time. It didn't just pop these 55 kilo drums that are weighing close to 500 pounds across the highway. It popped all the 55 gallon drums. Now, after, uh, if you put a, f a 55 gallon drum in the ground in less than five years, it's going to have holes in it. And so when it's Is getting pounded, quick? but he's, wow. yeah. Yeah. Because it just rushed right away with that kind of moisture. Well, that's what they have outside of St. Louis at that uh, nuclear dump. Underground. If you, you saw a picture of those uh, right. thousands of 55-gallon drums, laying had to be, just laying right in the ground, and they bulldozed some dirt over it. Oh, well, no problem. That's right. um, that was former, the old yeah. traffic thing. So former it, Governor Robert List of Nevada expressed doubt that anyone will ever know what's really underground at that site. Good luck with that, he said. We found when we did our investigation was that they had very, very skimpy records about what was there. So they may not even, well, somebody knows, but for the record, they don't know what's in there. That's what they say. It's right near the town. Uh, sickening. You know, no matter what it is, what kind of an environmental or industrial accident it, uh, it is, they always say the same things. Don't worry, there is no danger to public health and safety. Uh, and they always say in terms of situations like the one outside of Las Vegas in Nye County, preliminary air quality tests say the air is fine, just fine. Don't worry. Be happy.
I mean, it's just crazy. But they're going to continue testing over the next few weeks. They don't even know what's in the ground there. They don't. They say they don't. I don't believe that. They know where everything is there, basically. Unless it was a long time ago, maybe in the late 50s, early 60s, they buried stuff. And who knows? It's not right in the city of limits of Las Vegas, but they had a hell of a spike there. Huge. So what, what I'm trying to tell you is, it's not just along the coast. It's everywhere. If you live within 50 miles, a radius of 50 miles, of any nuclear power plant, please move. Especially if you have children. You, you, you want your children to grow up. You want to live all, to an old age and enjoy them and help them and enjoy the, the fruits of familyhood. You, 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 every radioactive source... 104 reactors in the U.S. leaks every day. Every plant, every nuclear plant leaks every day. They release radiation every day. It's a fact. And we've talked about that for years on this program. Dana, it's the same in Canada, of course. Yes, Jeff. And St. Louis, just a quick note on that. They actually buried trucks, those trenches. They drove them right into the trenches. That was according to the people who lived there. And then they got out and walked away, and just no one knows what was in those trucks. They buried them. Wow. They got out of them. Wow. And no one's going to go rooting around in there to find out either. Yeah, no. Um, and so all the nuclear power plants, each one of them have what they call spent fuel pools where they take the reactor cores after 18 months and you put it to cool down in this hard water. Mm -hmm. And they boil off 120,000 liters a day into the community. Mm -hmm. But a nuclear power plant is burning um, a million gallons a minute for each reactor. And there's one down in the States there, uh, hit the media a couple of weeks ago. It was going through 2.2 billion gallons a day. And each day, about 35 million gallons went back into the river, and the rest was evaporated into the community. Wow. And so there's enormous... Now, at the same time, they're mixing in that 120,000 liters of uh, evaporation into that steam that's coming out of there. So those big stacks, mm -hmm. uh, that's what they're doing. And so cancer rates... For children, uh, leukemia rates are 20% are, uh, more likely to get leukemia. And for women, you're six times more likely to get breast cancer. Now, six, that's just two six times. Studies. Six wow. times more likely. To get, if you live within 15 miles of nuclear power plant. Wow. Uh, or even Okay, 15 site. miles, folks. I, I, I draw the line at 50. But, just uh, driving past it is dangerous because you can breathe in. Like just driving time. past it is dangerous, and it just takes one radioactive hot particle and you could you can get cancer or 1800 autoimmune deficiencies while you're waiting <laughs> 1800 <laughs> autoimmune deficiencies wow wow that's the, the gallows yeah it's, every time everything about this gives you that gallows laugh it does where, it, it it's gallows humor it's black humor it's as black as it gets it just makes you woolly, you know, makes you feel weird because of what they're doing. And then they all come out and equate it with a banana or potato chip or walking in sunshine or getting on an airplane. They got nothing to do with E equals MC square, but it's it's a good way to confuse people and you can't have a conversation because they'll always bring that up. Because for 70 years, people have been reciting that. That's right. Yeah. And it, it, it's at the point now where people are becoming enraged because they want the truth and people are becoming... Uh, more anxious because they understand Fukushima is not a game anymore and people are becoming more demanding because right. they want real information and now they can't tolerate the word banana at all <laughs> and so there's an instant blowback but they keep using it and yeah. you go look at the comments and people will lose their minds uh, every time it's mentioned well, it, wasn't like, uh, it wasn't like that two years ago no 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 it's it's, uh, it's changed absolutely further, changed you know. uh, appreciably huge uh, they're trying to uh, GMO bananas, so that'll take care of bananas. Uh, seriously, uh, there's a move in Hawaii to try to stop it, but Monsanto, which has a big operation over there, they do a lot of that crap, uh, is trying to GMO bananas. Uh, it's, I, it's not going to stop, folks. It's just not going to stop. i done a radio interview in Hawaii a few days ago, and I put together about 50 headlines of Hawaii. Hawaii is being pounded. It's being I'm sure pounded. they are. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because the currents go right around it. They come to California, then they come right back on the south side of they, Hawaii. They absolutely just, do. Wow. It's the worst spot imaginable. And the numbers are already there. 50% of the people tested had uranium in their, 
urine. Say that tests. again. Five zero. Fifty percent of the people that were tested by one doctor showed positive for uranium, like quite a bit of uranium, and that the meltdown in their urine. Tested. In other words, they're taking it in, and the body's excreting it through the kidneys. Right. You would find it in the sewage systems. We see that heavily oh, through geez. Japan. The sewage systems are all contaminated so much they can't use the sewage. Normally, they would recycle it for a fertilizer and stuff, but they can't because it's such high. Uh, see, well, I'm again. That's that's insane, anyhow, because yeah. of all the pharmaceuticals that would be in there. <laughs> I mean, think and about GMO. that. GMO. Oh, the pharmaceuticals to me is just frightening. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's a shocking amount in the depth of doing. Here's another one for you, folks. My, this is these are quotes. Mind blowing die off of seabirds underway from California to Alaska. Now Dana knows all about this. He's taken those expeditions and he's he's seen so few birds. They're they're all they're starving. They are starving. They starve to death. Yeah. They literally wither away, starve, and then the the radiation finishes them off if they make it at all. There's nothing for them to eat. All the signs involved point to starvation from a lack of uh, forage fish. They had, the birds can't eat. There are no more fish. Sardines, as you said, herring. Yes, uh, and, uh, all the mammals too. Now, you know, what's interesting about this was that 260 days on the ocean of 365 on five expeditions. Wow. Uh, and of all the anchorages that I stayed in tow that whole time, because I, I lived out there on the ocean mostly by myself that whole time. Yeah. And uh, the first couple of months we had four people, but that was prohibitively expensive. But nevertheless, uh, uh, there was only four times in anchorages where I had the boat anchored did I see birds in with me. And out of those, uh, there was another time where there was a single bird uh, on the last trip hung out alongside the boat, right alongside the boat. Uh, and that's extraordinarily unusual. It was a, a tur, a black common tur. It hung out there for about six, seven hours straight. And it was lethargic the whole time. It didn't look healthy at all. I took a, a whole lot of pictures of it. Was it sitting on the boat? No, it was almost with his head in the water, uh -huh. but it never once put his head under the water, which is huh. really unusual. And that it, it, it would drift away from the boat and it would swim back towards, because I was tucked in. I had three beach lines up and an anchor. It was yeah. really rough where I was too. I couldn't eat, eat a meal. I couldn't have a cup of tea or eat on the third day. It was that rough. Uh, the whole day is like Jeez. rough. Yeah. Where were you I, anchored? That was on the west coast of Vancouver Island when oh. I was doing all the west coast of Canada. Yeah. <laughs> I went through. Man, you were getting right in the teeth. That trip. But that time was like, that was really bad. I only had six miles to go to shelter and I was stuck there for three days. I couldn't get out of there. I had to run in there and make it work. Uh, it came out of nowhere. We had a lot of storms during that period, of course. It was like four, I was there for six weeks. We had five weeks of storms. But I still pulled off the whole West Coast. I, I still don't know how either. I still sleep all day every day since I got back. I bet. Not well, pictures. you've earned it, my friend. That's yeah, amazing. So. Tell me uh, tell me about your site. Uh, are you getting any any contact from any politicians or anybody <laughs> who might help you? I know the answer. But, I mean, yeah, this is getting hit by a Soviet satellite. And that's, through. yeah, that's probably oh, true. Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to get it, but I can guarantee you, and you probably know the kind of visits you're getting at the site. <laughs> the traffic has to be going up and up. It is. It is. I yeah. think so. And I don't pay attention to it because uh, I, I, I just keep working. I, well, I don't have time. Pictures like me, I, don't I actually don't anything. go look at the stats very often, but yeah. they are good. I've got no complaints. It's yeah. definitely changed a lot this trip in the last number of trips. Mm -hmm. There's something different happening for sure. As I put up the rest of these pictures of the coastline, that is the, the definitive look for everybody. Because everybody would love to have someone go out there and do the whole coastline and document it, 15,000 miles of it. Well, that's what we went and done. We didn't wait for somebody else. We just this really done. should be made into a National Geographic special. Absolutely. Yeah, we, got the, we got enough material, hundreds of thousands of pictures, and endless yeah. underwater footage, and endless above water footage, and endless. I mean, there's a, there's a, see, if anybody is listening... I don't know if you'd even entertain the idea and wants to produce a, a, an absolutely staggering documentary, a forbidden documentary. Yeah, no talk to Talk to Dana about this. Yeah, He's by all means, contact me. Speaking of whales, there won't be many left at all. How tragic can that be? What have we done to our planet? <laughs> 